Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. After starting your mail merge, if you're using 2003 or XP, the first pane of the mail merge wizard will ask you, what type of document are you working on? You'll select the option button, or circle, that corresponds to the type of document that you're trying to create. In this lesson, you'll see how to create basic form letters. So let's just choose letters as your choice at the top of this first pane in the task pane. Now when you've done this, click the next hyperlink or the next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue to step two. Word will next ask, how do you want to set up your letters? If you have a blank document set up in the main window, then you can select use the current document. If you select this option, then you can simply click the next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue. However, if you would like to use one of the pre-made merge templates that are available with Word 2003 or XP, then in that case you can choose Start from a Template. Then you can click the Select Template command in the middle of the task pane. That launches the Select Template dialog box, or the new dialog box. In this dialog box you can double click on the mail merge template that you want to use as your merge document. They've got letters, faxes, and you just choose the one you want. And then you would click OK, knowing that you can modify it as necessary to suit your needs. Once you've selected your template, just click Next when you're ready to continue. Also notice that if we went back, and here I'm just going to click Previous to return to Step 2, you could also choose Start from an Existing Document. If you chose that option in Step 2, then down below you would have to choose an Office Document, or you could choose More Files, and then click Open. And at this point you could go find any Word document that you wanted to use as the basis of your merge document. So you can use whichever option you'd like. And then in step 3, after you've clicked Next, here you have to choose who you're going to send the document to. So once you've selected the document to use as your merge document, you have to select to whom you wish to send the merge document in the third panel of the Mail Merge Wizard. If you already have a list that you wish to use for the merge document, then select Use an Existing List option at the ta top of the task pane. You'll then need to click the Browse hyperlink in the middle of the task pane to launch the Select Data Source dialog box. Now this dialog box will open up to a folder called My Data Sources, so you may need to use the Look In drop-down to navigate to the folder that your actual data source, or table, is stored in. And here you could pick an Access Database, an Excel Spreadsheet, or a Word document that contains a table. And then you would click Open. Once you've selected the specific data source that you'll be using, you'll then see the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appear. You can use this dialog box to filter and sort the recipient information, but we'll discuss this in a later chapter. For now, just click OK on this box to close it. And then you could click the Next button at the bottom of the task pane window to proceed to the next step. Now, if you actually wanted to send information to the contacts listed in your Outlook Contacts folder, if you're using Outlook, then you can actually choose the Select from Outlook Contacts. Then you could click the Choose Contacts folder, which launches Outlook.
Then you would need to select the appropriate contacts folder in your Outlook account that you wish to use as the data source for the mail merge document. Once you've selected the contact folder you'll be using, you would then see the mail merge recipients dialog box appear. And once again you would use the dialog box to filter and sort the recipient information, but we will discuss that in a later chapter. So for now, just click OK on the recipient box to close it, and then you could click the next button to proceed to the next step, which is writing the letter. Also notice that in this third pane where we're choosing recipients, we could type a new list. If you did that, you would then click Selected Create, and Word would then prompt you to create a new list of recipient information for the mail merge. Once again, we'll look at this option in more detail in a little bit later chapter. So once again, use an existing list, select from Outlook contacts, or type in a new list. Here it'll show you which one of your choices has been made, and then when you click Next, we actually go in and write the letter. So now that we've selected a merge document and defined a data source, we just need to create the mail merge letter. So directly in the body of the letter, type any information that you want to remain the same from letter to letter. So you type in all the information that you don't want to have changing all the time. Now when you arrive at a point where you need to insert information from your data source into the letter, what you can do is select where you actually want it to be placed, and then you can click on any of the information shown in this particular section of the task pane to insert either an address block, which will put in the recipient information, a greeting line, postal barcodes, electronic postage, or more items. If you click the More Items command, this launches the Insert Merge Field dialog box. You can select the option for Database Fields at the top of the dialog box to see the list of available fields in your data source or table. Click on the field that you want to insert from the list in the middle of the dialog box and then click the Insert button at the bottom to insert the selected field into the position where your insertion point's at in your actual document. And then click Close. Make sure that you have adequate spacing between the fields. You don't want them stacked right on top of each other. Now once you've inserted any fields wherever you need them, just click the Next button at the bottom of the Mail Merge pane to continue the process. So to preview the merge results, just double click the double right and double left pointing chevrons at the top of the task pane window to view the merge results prior to actually merging the data. After you've previewed the information to ensure that the merge will perform correctly, and once again looking for things like missing data, you would click the next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue. When you want to print the letters, at this point just click the print button at the top of the mail merge document 
to launch the Merge to Printer dialog box. Here you can select a range of re records to print. And you would just click OK when you're ready to print all the records. Now notice also, if you wish to make individual changes to the various letters in the group, you may also click the Edit Individual Letters command in the middle of the Task Pane window. This will then launch the Merge to New Document dialog box, where you can select the range of records to merge to a brand new document. In the new document that would then appear, you can make changes to the individual letters if you wish, and then print the new document with the editing changes to complete the mail merge. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.